Welcome to this virtual tour of Harvard University's Houghton Library, located in Harvard Yard in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My name is Beth Cope. I'm an archivist here at Houghton, and I'll be your guide as we explore the library's public spaces and history. Houghton Library is Harvard's largest special collections library, built to house the university's rapidly growing collection of rare books, manuscripts, drawings, and unique objects. Houghton opened in 1942, and was the first freestanding special collections library on an American university campus. Houghton is named for Arthur A. Houghton Jr., who contributed most of the funds to build the library. He was a member of Harvard's class of 1929 and the president of Stuben Glassworks, a subsidiary of the Corning Glass Company in New York. He was a philanthropist as well as a businessman, serving in his later life as the president of the New York Philharmonic and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Houghton was also a book collector who acquired British literary and historical manuscripts and first editions, including the works of romantic poet John Keats. Houghton Library was designed to house Harvard's special collections acquisitions for years to come, but it was completely full in five years. Today, the library's collections are housed on-site in our secure stacks, as well as the stacks of neighboring Pusey and Lamont libraries, and off-site in the Harvard Depository. Altogether, we have 600,000 printed books, 45,000 linear feet of archives and manuscripts, millions of photographs, prints, posters, printed ephemera, programs, playbills, and many three-dimensional objects. Houghton also administers the Harry Elkins Widener Collection in Widener Library and the Woodbury Poetry Room in Lamont Library. Thanks to our active acquisitions program, our collections are always growing, both in scope and in new directions, to reflect the needs of a more diverse and inclusive community of researchers. When you first enter the Houghton Building, you'll find yourself in our lobby. This space was recently renovated to welcome visitors and provide a first glimpse of our collections. The perimeter of the room has 10 large display cases, which we use to showcase manuscripts, volumes, and historic objects. The case contents change several times a year to keep things interesting and fresh. Also in the lobby is the freestanding History of Ideas case, which was created in recognition of the anonymous alumni donors who supported the renovation of our reading room. The case exhibits items from the donors' collections and Houghton's. These also change regularly. On one end of the building, off the lobby, is the Edison and Newman Room, which was named for families who supported its renovation in 2005. It's Houghton's most versatile space, serving as the gallery for three major exhibitions every year, as well as a lecture and performance space. The glass cases in the room also hold part of our collection of incunables, or books printed before 1501. These are some of the oldest printed books at Harvard. On the other side of the lobby, you'll find the Houghton Reading Room, where researchers can use our collections which do not circulate outside the library. No Harvard affiliation is needed to use Houghton. Our researchers come from all over the United States and the world. Every year, we host hundreds of students from Harvard and elsewhere, many of whom come to the library for classes or their own undergraduate or graduate research. We also welcome around 40 researchers to Houghton annually through our visiting fellowship program, which provides stipends so they can travel to Cambridge. Other users include teachers and faculty, professional and independent scholars, artists, writers, and creators doing research for creative projects, and more. We welcome everyone who wants to use our collections in their pursuit of knowledge. For those who can't visit the library in person, we strive to make our collections available digitally through Harvard's online catalog, as well as through various search tools that enable users to access records and archives, manuscripts and books, images, maps, and more. Moving back through the lobby, if we head up the spiral staircase or take the elevator, we'll find ourselves on Houghton's second floor. Here, we have rooms dedicated to important donors and specific collections, as well as offices and teaching spaces. In each of the rooms, you'll note the large number of bound volumes. These items are all available for research and can be used in our reading room. Not all of the spaces on this floor are open to the public, 
but let's start with the one that is. Our first stop is the Amy Lowell Room. Amy Lowell was born in Brookline, Massachusetts in 1874. She was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet, collector, editor, and patron of the arts. During her lifetime, she built the most important American collection of original manuscripts and documents related to John Keats, about whom she wrote a two-volume biography. When she passed away in 1925, she left her library to Harvard, as well as a bequest which was for decades the largest fund Houghton had to acquire rare books and manuscripts. Today, the room named in Lowell's honor houses part of her library, as well as manuscripts acquired through her bequest, such as the notebooks of Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, which cover his full career. In addition to housing the collections items, we use the room as an exhibition space, with exhibitions rotating three times a year. The next room on our tour is the William King Richardson Room, which was designed by Richardson himself. Richardson was a Harvard alumnus, attorney, and bibliophile. The room was constructed in 1942, but remained empty until Richardson's death in 1951, when it was furnished with items from his home and the shelves filled with his collection. Particularly notable are over a hundred incunables, late medieval and early Renaissance illuminated manuscripts, and dozens of volumes with beautiful decorations and bindings. Arthur Houghton collected John Keats for 60 years, so it's unsurprising that Houghton Library has a room dedicated to the poet, who died in 1821 at the age of 25. In addition to Houghton's collection, this room also holds Amy Lowell's Keats collection and editions of Keats from the early 19th to the early 20th centuries. The room's focal point is Keats' life mask, which was cast in bronze by the poet's friend, Benjamin Robert Hayden, the mantelpiece reads 1795 to 1821, Keats' birth and death dates. Houghton's Keats collection contains 91 of the 126 known literary manuscripts in Keats' hand, many of the surviving letters by the poet, first editions of his three volumes of poetry, and books he owned or annotated. The display cases hold rotating original or facsimile manuscripts or typescripts by poets from Keats' day through the present. Off the Keats room is the Emily Dickinson room, named for the posthumously famous poet who lived a reclusive and relatively anonymous life in Amherst, Massachusetts from 1830 to 1886. The collection holds Dickinson's poetry manuscripts as well as the Dickinson family's papers, their library of over 900 titles, some of their furniture, and other artifacts. The collection contains more than half of Emily Dickinson's existing poems in manuscript and 34 of the 40 known fascicles, small bundles of poems stitched together. Notable in the Dickinson room are Emily's square piano, the portrait of Emily and her siblings, Austin and Lavinia, as children, and furniture from Emily's bedroom, including the chest of drawers where her poetry manuscripts were found after her death, and the small table and chair where most of the poetry was written. The final space on our tour is a suite of rooms named for Houghton benefactors Donald and Mary Hyde. The Hyde suite consists of a foyer, the oval exhibition room, a conference room, and a special closed stacks area. The Hydes bequeathed to Houghton the greatest collection ever assembled of the 18th century English polymath, Samuel Johnson. They collected important manuscripts from Johnson's professional and personal life, as well as more than half of his surviving letters. Johnson was the dominant literary figure of his day, noted as a first-rate poet, novelist, essayist, biographer, anthologist, critic, and editor, especially of Shakespeare. He was perhaps most famous for his massive two-volume dictionary of the English language, which provided definitions of words and the way they were used in literature from the Elizabethan period to his present day. The dictionary contains around 225,000 quotations, 
17,500 of which are from Shakespeare. The Hyde Oval Room is the jewel of the Hyde Suite, done in period style. Around the room are portraits of Johnson and some of his contemporaries, many painted by the poet's friend, Sir Joshua Reynolds, and all from the Hyde's collection. The portrait in the middle of the room, however, belonged to Arthur Houghton. The moldings on the ceilings were cast from original molds by Robert Adam, an influential 18th century architect and designer. In addition, at four points on the ceiling are small round paintings depicting different places where Johnson lived. Johnson himself appears in all four paintings. This concludes our virtual tour of Houghton Library. For more information about the library and its collection, find us online at library.harvard.edu forward slash libraries forward slash Houghton. Thank you for joining us today.